Daniel, welcome back once again for another episode of uh, Dax Annie Patterns. I'm really curious to know what the topic will be today, so I'll hand it to you to kick it off. Yeah, thanks, Reid. Mm -hmm. uh, the file has some enigmatic name called 8 Dax, <laughs> so you can't really tell what it is. Ooh. Well, the topic of today is kind of simple, even though the formula is not simple. So when looking at this formula what are your first thoughts and by the way i was very nice and i added a line break here so we've got two lines originally when i saw this formula it was one line <laughs> so i mean thing number thought. one besides actually just dissecting it is usually copy and paste that into dax formatter to make it easier to read uh because it, it does at least add the line breaks to follow the logic a lot easier but we have via two formulas so um Number one, like, I mean, generally speaking, you should not have a raw column in the base of a calculate function. That should be a, that should be a core measure. So sum of sales amount should mm -hmm. actually probably be a sales amount value somewhere else to begin with. Uh, just as like a general practice, let's see, you're filtering your sales table. Um, okay. Filter sales. True equals. I've never seen something written that way. It's usually like, you know, <laughs> lo logic equals true, not true equals logic. So like, at, at least from just how i write it it seems that seems backwards yeah. uh but either way yep, it's agreed. it's a it's a check for if from your sales table and then your item table um as well so you're filtering you're filtering a sales table but uh looking for values from i'm assuming the a dimension table that's in there uh mm -hmm. values item contains and then within there you're looking for an item full or discounted uh full okay so there's a single filter it's just full or discounted equals full so i would think that that entire filter statement could just be completely extracted and just calculate sales amount you know uh item full or discounted equals full but then the uh, there's also a second part of that filter where count rows full or discounted equals one so it's it's all it's it's bringing only sales data relate you know when when essentially the, <clears throat> that column or when when there there's rows associated with that so like uh, corresponding rows from that yeah. table so it's it's interesting logic uh i mean the, the takeaway <laughs> really is it it looks like it's just trying to grab the full sales amount specifically and then uh, adding it to same value for the discounted amount but they're two halves mm -hmm. of a coin so mm -hmm. almost like i would have couldn't just simply calculate in the sales amount return the same result unless maybe the only thing i can think of that would be throwing me off is the count rows part which is maybe doing some weird logic but otherwise it if you if you're getting the subtotal for full and the subtotal for discounted and then you're adding the two together would that not just give you the full amount to begin with <laughs> and and it's uh it's blowing out the same value twice on your on your rows down there of course but yeah, that, that, that's a confusing measure. Like, and generally, my first thing with the client is just, all right, walk me through. Why'd you do this? Why'd you, like, just, I want business logic for each single thing, and then I will translate to you as a Rosetta Stone the new way that you should be writing this. Um, so, like, yeah, why, why don't you help uh, break down exactly all the weird things in this thing? <laughs> yeah, actually, that was great, Reed. You've picked up, like, all the issues here, starting with the Excellent. most important one, which was lack of formatting. Let's get mm -hmm. back to uh, like a formatting um, in a moment. Um, just to answer uh, your question about the count rows uh, values thing. <laughs> and by the way, yes, I totally agree with you. It's a confusing measure, and I swear <laughs> I did not make it up. You, you just cannot make it up, right? Of course, <laughs> you can no. only see it somewhere. <laughs> but this, it's interesting like, is when once you're actually good at a language, it's really hard to write really bad logic. But it's when you, yeah. when you give someone half information and they have to figure things out on their own, uh, that's where the truly like ugly measures can come out. Like, granted, they're doing the you know, they're doing the best they can given their expertise. But like scenarios like this, I would never think to write. But if it works, people just try th it's like spaghetti at a wall. You try it until it works, and that's how you end up with a lot of these weird measures. Is technically it might be working in their scenario. It's just a very unoptimized way to do it. Yeah, and the for a start. You don't want to filter a fact table because, like you said, 
this uh, filter, like what it does is it filters uh, the fact when um, there are these two conditions met, this uh, mm -hmm. pool or discounted is full, and uh, the number of values here is uh, one. Uh, and there is another part which uh, does a similar thing. Now, you don't want to filter a fact table, and that's going to be a topic for one of the next episodes. Uh, I'll Excellent. show you exactly why. Now, this true equals, like, why do you even need to do it? You don't need to write true equals or something equals true because the second parameter in filter is looking for true values. Like it's, just, a, it's an implicit check, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so similar to like a, um, uh, an if statement. If not is blank, writing that out for a measure is the same thing as just saying if measure. It automatically is doing a check for true or false in there. So um, you don't need to... Yeah. It will still result to the same thing. Um, and I will actually make one argument is sometimes for people who are handing this off to, to people less familiar with Power BI, there's no performance difference in, in saying e equals true or true equals. It still does the same logic in the engine, but it does make it a little bit more readable. So for, for real basic beginners, sometimes if you're handing it off to someone who has a hard time noticing implicit true checks in shorter measures, it can at least help them understand the logic and readability of something. Uh, if if they're not as yeah. familiar with the optimized way to write stuff in DAX. Yeah. And this uh, count rows values uh, equals one, that's just has one value, you know? But anyway, that's not the point mm. of um, yeah. this episode. Let's go back to formatting. Now, <laughs> read mentioned DAX formatter. So let me copy this, control A, control C, and I've got DAX formatter in a separate uh, window here. Okay, so I'll just paste it here, okay, format. I will argue also for the, the new tool that they just released like three days ago, uh, the new Bravo um, external tool yes. that, that SQL BI released. Uh, it has a button where you can select all measures, click format right back to your model, and it just insta formats every single measure in your model, which is really nice. It, it's yes. this, but like uh, on, you know, uh, turbocharged. So I, I'm very mm -hmm. impressed with their, with their new external tool. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, and you don't even need to leave, uh, you know, Power BI. Well, yes, you'll have another window, but you don't need to open a browser, go no somewhere. Copy -paste. Because, uh, yeah, the tool is just a separate window here. So you go to uh, Format DAX, and then um, just uh, maximize this. So I've got this. Um, that's the preview of uh, the formatted mm -hmm. uh, measure. And, yeah, let's uh, select this. Format selected, mm -hmm. and okay, done. Go back to Power BI Desktop. Here yes, it is. Yeah. Now, let me make so a quick point. So much easier to read. Beca yes, it's much easier to read, <laughs> and because of this, it's much easier to pick up the issue that actually read was very good and picked up right away, and that's we get the same value anyway. Like, all <laughs> yeah. these checks, they're useless. So. Look, I was in the, in the same position as Reid. I didn't know what the measure was supposed to do. However, after some time, I figured out the point of the measure. And let me just show you quickly the better measure, like the better way to write it. And here it is. If you select full from this column, it should be the full amount. Otherwise, it should be discounted amount. Ah, uh, that's, that's what it's what trained. It's supposed okay. to do. Really, that's it's trying to have a right. single measure that's actually pulled in from two different columns. So that that's why you couldn't just sum. Okay, so it, it's basically it's switching. Gotcha. Yes, that's all. Like okay. you didn't need to write all these constructs. And again, I swear I did did not make it up. That's exactly what people wrote. So they actually like, didn't write it correctly. Imagine. Then I think at the bottom is because they they're calculating the sum of the full amount twice. So the, the it actually that's should be right. discounted amount in their second section. So that, like there actually right. is and like, would be, yeah, it wasn't even returning the right outputs. That's right. It would be very difficult to pick up before formatting. Mm. Like Reed is very experienced. So he saw it right away. However, for someone who is less experienced, it would be just nearly impossible. So yep. the takeaway from this episode is you should format your values by using DAX formatter or better yet, Bravo BI. That's the uh, new tool. Exactly. No, like, I, like that, that is that is always step one. Every time I'm giving like a new client workbook or somebody gets me for help desk hours is copy paste, pop it into there. All right, now like, you know, you, there might be 65 lines of code, but at least I can scan through and, and start to notice the patterns and issues. Uh, so yeah, good, good takeaway for that for sure. Yep.
that's all for today. Thanks, Reid. Absolutely. Until next time. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.